Hello, I hope you're well. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today's video is the 20 questions book tag and I was tagged by the lovely Noelle at Noelle 7 Pages to do this video and I'm super excited because the questions seem really really fun. So why don't we just dive right in. Question number one. How many books is too many books in a series? Um, I don't know that I have an answer to this one, to be quite honest. I don't read that many book series, ziz, because I primarily read standalones. And I think that's partly because historical fiction doesn't necessarily have as many book series in it as like a genre like fantasy or sci-fi or even YA. That being said, one of my favorite books, Outlander, is in a book series and it is a series that is eight or nine books long at this point and I think it's going to end up being ten when all is said and done. So I really just think it depends on the series for me because if I'm invested then you bet your bottom dollar I'm going to read all ten books. But I do think if I had a choice it would probably be maybe a trilogy? Maybe? But yeah, I have to be really invested to read a series, but if I am invested then it it doesn't matter how long it is, essentially. So question two. How do you feel about cliffhangers? I don't mind them, I guess. I am not mad about a cliffhanger the same way I'm not mad about an ambiguous ending in a book. That being said, obviously hitting a cliffhanger is the worst when you are really interested in a book and want to know what's next, but I think a well done cliffhanger that makes you feel that way is really thrilling too. So it's not something that I would knock generally, but a cliffhanger or an ambiguous ending has to be intentional and has to have some sort of purpose behind it because if you're just throwing a cliffhanger in there because you want to add a little bit of drama then please don't. But like a good cliffhanger is a thing of beauty. I will just say that. So next we have hardcover or paperback. And I'm gonna go with paperback on this one for practical reasons. So before the pandemic I basically never left the house without a book in hand. Like when I went to work I usually had a tote bag that had my lunch in it and also a book or two that I would be reading on the train or at lunch. I often slipped books into my handbag. Everywhere that I went, they went. Kind of like Little Bo Peep and her sheep. So that's much easier to do with a paperback versus a hardcover because hardcovers tend to be bigger and a little bit heavier, but also speaking practically, I tend to like the feel of a paperback when I'm reading, partly because book jackets can be really annoying, but I hate taking them off. I don't like holding a naked book, so I always keep them on the books when I'm reading, and then I'm terrified of like ripping or somehow damaging the book jacket. So it just causes a lot of anxiety <laughs> when I'm reading a hardcover with a book jacket. So for my own peace of mind, paperback. Definitely a paperback. Question four. Favorite book? Um, I'm gonna go with Fingersmith by Sarah Waters, which I've talked about way too many times on this channel and it was in my video with my most loved books. So. I will direct you there if you're interested, but as far as being this gorgeous atmospheric Victorian gothic novel with an LGBTQ story and so much atmosphere and just plot twist and plot twist and plot twist that just literally left me shocked and amazed, that book just does it for me. <laughs> and to be honest, as someone who studied gothic literature, I think it does such an amazing job at taking 
traditional gothic elements and updating it and giving it a more modern twist. But I really love that book so, so much. Least favorite book. Another controversial answer here, I think. I'm gonna go with The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Swab, which I read in January. Was it January? Yes, it was January. It makes me feel all warm and fuzzy to know that that book has had such an impact on people and that so many love it, but for me it was a hard pass. Um, it was a case of I didn't think the overall premise was all that unique or original, like Faustian bargains are a thing and have been a thing for centuries. When I look back on it, I didn't really care all that much for Addie. I didn't think she was a like three-dimensional character or all that interesting to be quite honest and I just honestly took offense to the fact that it could be considered historical fiction because none of the world building that is involved in historical fiction was done here. It just felt lazy on that front and fell flat. Like you literally could have been in any time period in any European country and it wouldn't have mattered or made a single bit of difference to Addie and her life. It was just so bland in my opinion on that front and I went on about it quite a bit in my January wrap up but that that's where I'll leave it for now in this video. <laughs> Question 6. Love triangles yes or no? I'm gonna go with yes, and that's because I recently realized that a lot of fiction that I read have affairs in them, and usually that involves a love triangle of some sort. But I will say that a love triangle, like many things, needs to be done well. There has to be a certain degree of emotion and authenticity and just impact, I guess, for lack of a better word. And I don't want just like a love triangle that's just like thrown in to create melodrama. Like those are the worst. You know, when you have a couple together and it's like, oh, let's throw in a dash of a love triangle to blow things up and then <laughs> see them get back together. Like, I don't like that type of melodrama. Like if you want that, watch a soap opera or a telenovela but I want like real emotion and drama if there's gonna be a love triangle, not just like a dash of it and a quick resolution. Seven, the most recent book you just couldn't finish. So apparently the answer to that question is The Book of Night Women by Marlon James, which now that I think about it, I DNF'd last summer. I liked the premise of the book. I will say that um, it is about slavery in Jamaica, which is where my family is from, and is honestly a time period on the island that I know next to nothing about. So I was intrigued by it, but it was such a laborious read. I got through about a third of the book before I just decided it wasn't worth it in the end. It was really dense. And I think part of the problem is that it was written in Patois. And while I can understand Patois for the most part when my relatives speak it, it is a very different experience reading it. So it takes even more time. And I just really didn't connect with the characters enough to continue it. So that was the last book I DNF'd. I honestly don't <laughs> DNF books all that often because there's part of me that really really likes to finish it but in some cases you just gotta you just gotta give up <laughs> so the next question a book you're currently reading i am currently reading two so one is my cousin rachel by daphne du maurier i love rebecca which is du maurier's most popular and probably most famous novel but this one is up there in um, popularity as well the main character is a 
young man who is raised by his cousin who is basically old enough to be his father and his cousin goes abroad for his health and ends up marrying while away but before he can return with his bride he dies under somewhat suspicious circumstances and so Philip is torn between deciding whether the widow had anything to do with it or not and so it's a romantic suspense I think is what it's classified as and I'm really enjoying it so far um, so I'm looking forward to reading more of that then I'm also reading The Real Wallace Simpson by Anna Pasternak which is a biography on Wallace Simpson the Duchess of Windsor the woman that King Edward abdicated the throne for. So I'm really enjoying that as well and looking forward to continuing to listen to the audiobook. Last book you recommended to someone. <laughs> that would be Tipping the Velvet by Sarah Waters and I recommended that book to my friend Liz. So I think I described it to her as risque Victorian Gothic LGBTQ story and I had so much fun with that book. So stay tuned for my wrap up later this month because it was good. Like really good. <laughs> Next, oldest book you've read. By publication date, if I consider the books that I read strictly for class, then I think probably The Canterbury Tales by Chaucer, which I think was written in the 14th century. So if I'm just looking at books that I've read for pleasure, I would probably have to say Shakespeare, um, because I have actually read a number of those plays just for fun. I know I'm a weirdo, but especially like Hamlet, Macbeth, and even The Tempest, I've all read those for pleasure and recreation and those were written in the 16th century and I guess 17th century I think some of the later ones. So there you go. So newest book you've read also by publication date I think that would be Zarina by Ellen Alpston which I think came out in November 2020. I really loved Zarina like love love loved it. It is a historical fiction about Catherine the first of Russia, Peter the Great's second wife, and I was obsessed with that book when I read it and think about it constantly. It was just such a well done historical fiction, so well researched. The character of Catherine the first became like a historical girl crush for me and I just love the opulence and the scandal and just everything about it. It was just so so good. So I highly recommend that one. But yeah, I don't tend to pay attention to release dates all that much. To be honest, I'm abysmal at keeping track of when things are released in part because so much of what I read ends up being backlist, generally speaking, and I just read things as my mood dictates in that way so I'm just really bad at keeping track of those things unfortunately. <laughs> so the next question is favorite author and she's actually been mentioned in this video twice already. Sarah Waters who is the queen of gothic fiction, queen of suspense, queen of atmosphere, queen of plot twists, just basically queen of everything in my opinion. I fangirl her books so hard. I am s not slowly, I am very quickly <laughs> working my way through her backlist. I think I only have two books left so I am like eagerly awaiting news that she has another book coming out because I don't know what I'm going to do when I finish all of her books except weep. <laughs> so I really 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 need more books to come out from her ASAP. But yeah, at the moment, Sarah Waters, favorite author. Definitely check out her books if you haven't already, because they are golden. Golden! Question 13. Buying books or borrowing books? Buying books. For a number of reasons. The first is that I like to collect books. 
I like to own books. There's something about the like tactile experience of it that I really appreciate. And in my area, the library system isn't great, so borrowing books isn't necessarily a feasible option for me, but I do enjoy borrowing audiobooks with the Libby app. Like that discovery last year has been game changing. But yeah, I, I am definitely a book buying person for sure. So the, the next question is a book you dislike that everyone else seems to love. And Addie LaRue, for sure, as I mentioned in my least favorite book response, but generally speaking, I feel like I don't read any of the popular books. I don't read like any of the fantasy book series that people gush about. Um, I don't read any of the sci-fi series that people gush about. There are a lot of them out there, but the one that really comes to mind instantly would be Addie LaRue. So there you have it. So bookmarks or dog ears? I'm going to go with bookmarks, but when I say bookmarks, I am like a Girl Scout when it comes to bookmarks and anything that I can grab my hands on that can work as a bookmark is a bookmark. Pieces of tissue, receipts, um, the little flags that I use to annotate my books, those have been used as bookmarks before, coasters. I think at one point I actually used a match or a match book. Like literally anything goes as far as bookmarks. I do own bookmarks, but I tend to not use the ones that I buy because I lose them and then I feel like it's a waste of money. And yes, I know that logic makes absolutely no sense because it's a waste of money to also buy bookmarks and not use them. But this is just how my mind works, I guess. But to me, dog earring books is a no, no. My books are meant to look pristine and one of the things I tell anyone who borrows a book from me is do not dare dog ear my book. Like don't because you will be on my shit list if you do. Like that is gauntlet thrown down level stuff. Like I am very serious about keeping my pages unbent. So, so that is that answer there. Next is a book you can always reread. I would say Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier because I have reread that book a few times already and although I know how the book ends and I know the plot twist, the suspense has never like diminished for me. It still gets me every time somehow. I don't know how. It's like magic. But that is a more modern gothic novel and it is about this young woman who marries Maxim de Winter who is this worldly former widower I guess because he's remarried and when she returns to his family home in Manderley she's basically dealing with the ghost of his deceased wife and the sort of shadow that Rebecca, the dead wife, has cast over Manderley and the people who live there. So it is really, really good and I highly recommend it. Can you read while hearing music? The answer is yes. Actually, when I used to commute to work, a lot of the times I would have music on while I was reading books on the train. It doesn't really phase me. I tended to listen to instrumental music while reading, but I could listen to something with lyrics as long as it was a song that I was familiar enough with that the lyrics wouldn't distract me and I wouldn't try to start like singing along. But generally speaking, I can read with all sorts of noise around me. Like I can read with the TV on, I can read while people are talking around me. It really does not bother me um, or and I don't find it distracting at all. It's just when I'm reading a book usually I tune out the rest of the world so it ends up working but having sort of ambient noise I find is very soothing and don't mind it at all. One POV or multiple POVs? 
This is another ambiguous answer because I don't really have a preference. Both single POV and multiple POV can be done really, really well. And I think in historical fiction, you have a fair share of both that you come across. Again, it's just a case of like, it needs to be done well. The characters always need to feel three dimensional and fully formed, even if you have multiple perspectives that you're reading from. But I will read either. I'm not put off by either. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's how I feel about that one. Do you read a book in one sitting or over multiple days? So I can read a book in one sitting and I certainly have. Like I've had those days where you just do nothing but read one book literally all day. Like literally. But I find I don't do that as much now as I used to. And I think part of that is because now adulting kind of takes priority so I don't necessarily have the time to just lose a day and just do nothing but read. I also, in my old age, have become definitely more regimented. So I like to have a schedule and I set aside time each morning when I read and that is my reading time. And since time is not infinite, there's a definite end point for me so that I can go on and continue to do the other things that I need to get done during the day. So I tend to read books over the course of multiple days now, more so than just in one sitting. But it is very tempting sometimes when a book is really, really good. So the last question, number 20, is who do you tag? And I'm going to tag Katie over at Katie Reads and Rants, also Rosie at Rosie Cockshut, Margaret at Margaret Pinard and also Serena over at A Wandering Mind. I would love to hear your answers to this tag because it was a lot of fun. And I didn't check to see if any of you had done this tag before. So you might have, that's a possibility. But if there's anyone else who's interested in doing this tag, certainly let me know because I would love to hear your answers too. But with that, I'm going to wrap up this video and thank you so much for watching and as always if you enjoyed it be sure to give it thumbs up, comment, and subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye!